So becoming a video game developer has always been a dream of mine and I've always wanted to be a game developer on Roblox and that's because I've literally been playing it for over 10 years not to flex like I would say I've gotten a bit better at making games like don't you see this beautiful terrain generation? It's a work in progress, okay? Anyways, in reality, everybody has to start somewhere. And I personally really enjoy seeing what people have made in the past. I like seeing how people have improved. So let's go ahead and show you all the old games I've made. And trust me, there are plenty. So a really, really long time ago, I made a game called Portal 2. Work in progress. I made this like seven years ago. And it, it kind of blew up. It has 104,000 visits. I have no idea where these came from. I assume it's just people searching up Portal 2 and then seeing this pretty decent looking thumbnail, I guess. And then they check it out. I mean, I, I literally made it in 2016. How long ago was that? That was literally seven years ago. That's actually insane. Coming really soon, story mode. Yeah, story mode, mm-hmm. GUI, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Working portal cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a question mark next to animation? I mean, just look at the like to dislike ratio. I definitely misled people with this game. So let me show you what this game is. I mean, it's literally the game icon. That's literally about it. So this is GLaDOS. 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 It's this guy. I literally remember copying this exact picture. Like if you look at it side by side, it's the same thing. Step on the green pad to see the work on the final game. Mm hmm. I mean, really, this was more of a showcase, which is what I should have called it. I don't know why I called it a Portal 2 work in progress. It should have been Portal 2 showcase. Showcase. So when I have gotten a million dislikes, look at the portal gun. Why, why is he so fat? Why is the sentry guy so fat? Yeah, so I just really enjoyed building and the reason I built now I feel like this is true for many many developers Especially ones that build and now don't take this as something offensive, please But if you want to start making games But like you don't want to do coding or you haven't gotten there yet Because like coding is not something that's that easy to learn for let's say a 10 or 12 year old Then instead of coding you'd probably try building because that's exactly what I did I was literally I think 10 when I made this now back Back in the day, I actually thought I was an amazing builder, but looking at it now, I mean, eh, it's not that bad. I don't know. Like, here's a lot more stuff I made behind the scenes. We sort of have a level over here. We have the iconic elevator. I mean, this is literally not bad at all. Oh, this is like where you arrive, I think. And I, I never finished. But like, yeah, I, I tried making this into something, but I didn't have the skills to do so. Maybe in the future, I'll make my own portal game. And now what you're going to realize, back then, I was obsessed with building stuff. This is the International Space Station, if you don't know. And I used to record all these and post them on YouTube. I mean, let me show you more. So like, this is another house I built, and then I post it on YouTube. And then I kind of got up obsessed with doing that all I would do is like build the front of a house and post it and never actually make a game and here's another house I built now what I used to do is like take pictures from Google and just recreate them and now I remember like the video I made on this got like 5,000 views which was huge at the time actually it was probably even more more like 30k so yeah this was a pretty long phase I have like 30 of these and I don't want to bore you guys with it I want to jump straight to the coding this was my first attempt at actually making a game I got a bit older and a bit smarter so I, I kind of understood what I'm doing so over here at the bottom you can see we have a bunch of furniture a tree a lamp i think that's a chair i think that's supposed to be a closet and that's like a shelf i know they look absolutely terrible because they're so tiny anyway so if we click on one of them as you can see we can drag it around you can do e and q to rotate it x to cancel I'm surprised that works and then click to place i don't know why the border is still there but like hey it works it's something and now the lamp also works now what's cool about the shelf is that you can't place it on the floor or ceiling it has to be on a wall but don't be impressed because I, I remember how i coded this it was very brute forcey of me it, it was not good but like hey there's even like collision checking see the reason i made this project is because i had an idea of a game in my mind which is still a game that i might make and I i'm gonna show you something in a little but like this is a pre prerequisite to something bigger and better and i also have a hidden gui that's called voting choices that has these you might be seeing where i'm gonna go with this so i don't know if you guys have ever played the sims but this takes a lot of inspiration from it so you can select the room type and then you can select the type of furniture so let's say in this case let's say this is a living i mean it says bedroom so let's do bedroom so then we can select a bed and we have different beds classic double-sized bed and i'm not gonna lie at the time of making this uh, i paid some money to get a bunch of models and ui done only the icons are like 3D models, like everything else is programmed myself. And you may have noticed, thought this was really cool. If you place down an object, it sort of animates itself into where it's supposed to be. Now this was when I just discovered tweeting, so I was like, wow, that, that's so cool. Anyway, so you can also remove, remove, like not remove, but like remove them. You could also remove them. I also made this coloring system that I thought was really sick at the time, but looking back at it, um, 
I don't think so. So instead of having a color wheel, a proper color wheel, I made this thing. So you can choose a color and then you can choose the shade within the color. So let's say I, I want something that's pink or reddish. Let me go to red and let me look at which one I want. I mean, it's kind of cool how it changes the cursor and it shows like the color and everything. And then if I hover over any part of an object and left click, it's gonna color it. And I can also color the walls. Now, I don't think this was a terrible project, but my scope for the game was a bit too big for what I knew how to make. And now at the top here, you probably know Notice that it says not enough players now why does it say not enough players all right all right let me explain the game concept over here also these are some of the models these are absolutely beautiful they were made by a model called Eliana I don't know if I said that right but they are absolutely incredible anyway so the concept of the game was that everybody was given a room for example this room let's say there are five players in the game then every player will be given this exact room not they're not all in the same room everybody's given a separate room but it's this room okay and then they're given let's say 10 minutes to to decorate it and they can place whatever they want wherever they want they can color it however they want and then after the 10 minutes are up they can vote for who's they like most now this might remind you of something which is minecraft hypixels build battle game mode which is exactly sort of what i was trying to recreate but with like decorating instead of building and then you're able to like choose like what what type of votes you want to give them and then at the end they're all tallied up and then you have the winner now even me talking about this game now i, I genuinely think it's a good idea this is a game i genuinely want to play to this day and i made this back in i believe 2020 but i worked on it throughout i think like the beginning of 2021 so this game displays my skill level two to three years ago i hope you guys think i've improved anyway so after that game i made a role play game that i called the community which is the worst name ever now the reason i made this role play game is okay there's two reasons first of all brookhaven was and still is doing amazing so like you know like if that game is doing well then like i want to have a piece of the role play scene but at the same time there were other role play games on roblox that i genuinely really enjoyed and one of those games was called clear skies over milwaukee and what i really liked about this game is just how realistic it felt like look at the walk animations the run animations i mean the whole environment just looked so nice this is supposed to be okay i don't know what's going on over here um <laughs> this is supposed to be a motel and everything and you have a bunch of tools you can equip and like you can use but there was a lot about the game i didn't really like so for example they were using a roblox's tool system which i mean I i'm sorry to whoever made this game but it's just not pretty plus this was their system for like changing your outfit or spawning in a car which oh, i'm sorry again but this is just ugly looking it's functional yes but like you can make it prettier and by the way this this design has not changed in like two years since i worked on my roleplay game it, it hasn't changed but what makes this game really nice is well the environment it it's just beautiful anyway so let me show you my version and i I know it's worse. Trust me, it's worse. The building is way worse. However, I think some aspects of the code are, are maybe a bit better. First things first, what I really wanted this game to be is a, just a very interactable roleplay game. As in everything you see, you can interact with. Also, you see how like the cursor moves to like what you can interact with, which I thought was really sick. Anyways, so you can open the doors. I'm not gonna lie, doors were and might still be one of the hardest things I've ever programmed. Yeah, so we have doors, we have light switches. And also my door system allows for like all types of door opening like a garage door and everything but so I can set the time for how long it takes for the door to open I can set where the hinge is I can set like the tweening style because I use the tween you can also open cabinets you can open this thing you can turn on stoves now stoves are actually very cool I don't know why the fridge is broken but let me get a chicken for me now let me drop the chicken on the stove look it, it's getting cooked I don't know if you can tell but it's literally getting darker and I think it's gonna catch on fire in a second see yes that means it's cooked now it says leave the kitchen and now it's on fire and there's also a toilet it's not working all right so over here to the left we have a few options so let's go through them one by one now tool menu when you click on it it shows you the tools right now it only says the text it's supposed to show you like a picture of the tool so let's say we equip the pistol now we have a pistol and you can press one or click this it's not working I, okay you can press one to equip it see it has an animation and everything if you press q it's, it lists the actions over here if you press q or click the gui it's gonna shoot now you might be wondering why did i do this it's because later into development and now this is also the reason why i stopped making this is because i realized that role play games are mostly played by people on phone which meant i had to prioritize people that play on phones but i designed it in a way that prioritizes pc players which you can really tell by like the whole cursor system and we also have a shopping cart now this was my own system as you can tell i was pretty proud of it at the time. now let's see what happens if i drop an object 
I mean, hey, the object breaks. However, like it's it resorts the inventory. And I had also made a customization system that doesn't seem to want to work. Well, anyways, I also have animations, which getting these to work was was very tricky. I'm not gonna lie. Uh oh, I think I'm stacking animations on top of each other. Oh god, what's going on? Yeah, this game was a bit of a mess. I mean, just look at how messy this code looks. What was I thinking? Oh, and I was still using object-oriented programming. Ew. And the reason I'm saying doors were really hard to program is because I literally had four scripts just for doors. So this might be a game I'll recreate in the future. Now, this project was supposed to be the first video on my channel. Now, if you don't know what the first video on my channel is, it's I made Would You Rather in Roblox. And this was actually Uno. Now, the reason I scrapped this is not because of the game itself, really. It's more because I just hated how the video was turning out because I, I wasn't talking while programming. I just programmed and recorded it without any talking. And then I was like, I'll do a a voiceover afterwards but then that voiceover guys that that was terrible anyways so here we have a table to start uno and if you walk in its zone you'll queue up and the idea is you can have multiple tables and you can just go in the zone queue up with your friends but i'm all alone and once it starts you're served out cards and now this ui is absolutely terrible and the cool thing about this is the fact that there's ui in front of you but there's also the cards in front of you and there's also the card here and the card here and i don't know i found that really cool now watch the animation when I place down a card. Wow! Isn't that cool? Also places the card up here. And I just did a plus two and it gave me a plus two. This is amazing. You can pick a color. That is, that is incredible. Wow. See like overall, th this is not a terrible game. It, it just needs to be polished up a lot. Let's look at the code. Actually not bad. Anyway, so once I noticed that the Uno video is turning out to be absolutely terrible, I thought I would retry it with the UI. And now, this is what I made. This is the new UI. Isn't it so much better and cleaner? Now getting the cards to overlap was an absolute headache. And look, when I hover over the card, it goes up. But I never finished it because I thought it was going to take too long. And at the same time, it's Uno, which was kind of uninteresting. And I was still using object-oriented programming for everything. Why am I doing that? Now let's go a bit in the past. Let's look at games that even I haven't looked at in forever. The impossible run. What is the impossible run? I, I, I do remember this building. I see why I called it the impossible run. Oh my, you can't even jump in the game. It's literally impossible. Oh my, oh no. Look at the scripts. I made a billion scripts. When did I make this? 2017. That explains it. So I was like 12 or 13 when I made this. And I think this is when I knew I wanted to pursue programming. Because like even though... I couldn't really write a big program. I understood what this did. I feel like a lot of young people get discouraged that they can't program Minecraft or like GTA 5 by the time they're 13. But you gotta set your expectations way low. The older you get, the more you're gonna learn, the more you're gonna understand. And you're gonna be able to do a lot more. And even when you're older, you're still always gonna be learning stuff. But I think managing expectations is the most important part. And now what is this game? I called it Blocks Repaid Act. Why would you pay for this? <gasps> I even had like Minecraft class. Wow, it's no way. I think you're supposed to like touch this. Yeah, and it gives you like a speed boost and jump boost. Then you're supposed to, no. See, like I didn't make it in time to the second like platform orange stand thingy. I did, no, why did it shoot? <gasps> I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of fun. So now I'm gonna get to the somewhat recent games. This was like 2020. This is when I started learning how to script on Roblox. And I made a game called Where's the Glass? And basically this is when I started understanding like events and functions and properties and so on. It's like your vision is just really bad and you're trying to find the glasses and once you find the glasses your vision is good again that was literally the entire project however i would say that this is the script that started with everything i don't know what this is it's called an object placement system press e oh interesting I'm, i must have carried like this code over to my other project but like the objects were allowed to collide with each other interesting basically all my object placement systems started here with the press e to place a tree and then it became the other game where you can place a lamp and a shelf and so on and then it also became the other game which is like the decorating competition game and then hopefully in the future is going to become something else as well isn't that cool anyway so that's all for today's video i think i covered most of the games i've made i do have a few older teeny tiny ones that i sort of just copied the code from from somewhere else so i'm not gonna be covering those but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and i'll see you all in the next one